Welcome back to the program, United States Senator Tammy Baldwin. First of all, Senator, thank you for spending a few minutes with us. Well, it's great to join you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And I guess uh, the reason we're talking to you today is because you continue to be busy in Washington in terms of putting up uh, legislation to help the citizens of Wisconsin. And just yesterday, uh, you were part of the introduction of a an act t- titled the Shrinkflation Prevention Act. And often in Washington, when there is a new piece of legislation that is put out, uh, the title can be a little bit off target. But in looking at some of the details of this, <laughs> that uh, title hits the bullseye, doesn't it? It absolutely does. And, you know, we have been frustrated uh, about seeing, uh, you know, uh, prices maintain a a real high when we go to the grocery store, even though we hear all the reports uh, that inflation is down, we're not seeing the savings when we go to the grocery store. But add on top of that, a new tactic that many of the companies are using well, maybe it's not so new, but but shrinkflation stands for the idea that you're charging the same price, but you're getting less product. And you see it happening across the board from paper products, toilet paper and paper towels to things like uh, crackers and cookies, uh, beverages. Uh, we're just seeing it left and right. And it's hard for consumers to Uh, see, you know, they're paying the same price they did last time, but they're getting two ounces less or, you know, just less product for uh, the same price. And corporations are are reaping the benefits. They're making uh, incredible profits without really exposing their tactics. And this is wrong. Consumers need a watchdog on their side. There's the old uh, Winston Churchill quote that uh, never let a good crisis go to waste. And frankly, this is the continuing saga of, uh, of the pandemic. And then, of course, the inflation that came post pandemic. And this is not the first piece of legislation you've put out that deals with this. This has been a bit of a pattern, hasn't it, in terms of corporations trying to for lack of a better term, take advantage of uh, some very difficult uh, conditions in the last uh, four or five years. Right. I mean, we understood uh, when we had uh, when we were in the grips of the pandemic and there was uh, a large demand and uh, constrained supplies that prices would go up. Um, but inflation has since eased and we are seeing uh uh, continued high prices for the products that we need. I'll give you a, a quick example. Uh, moms and dads out there know uh, the price of diapers. Um, the price of diapers uh, is um, significantly um, unconnected to its inputs these days. And so the inputs of paper products like diapers are uh, wood pulp, all right? That price, the input price, has gone down 25%. But we've seen no similar reduction of the price of diapers. Uh, I I would give you uh, countless, really, examples of where uh, there's no longer uh, the same issues that we had during the pandemic. We hear all the reports that inflation is going down, down, down. And yet we'll still still see the same high prices at the grocery store, the supermarket that we did at the height of the pandemic. Um, so diapers, dish detergent, uh, uh, popcorn, uh, I, I mean, all these uh, products. And so that's greedflation in my mind, um, you know, and then and you hear the uh, quarterly uh, reports of earnings and you see. Uh, uh, the you know the, the executives speaking with glee about we don't have to lower the price even though our inputs are lower people will still buy our products um, people need to know what's going on let me play devil's advocate for just yeah. a moment because you talk about uh, the folks that get out in front of those earnings reports and are, are very happy about it they'll say it's supply and demand that people are willing to pay for it how do you respond to something like that Well, we certainly saw the supply and demand issues uh, play out during the pandemic. There really was a constrained supply and very high demand. And that's when you saw prices go up. But when that situation eased, it's no longer about supply and demand. It's about greed. 
you know, if, if, if you then just meet and say, well, um, people are still buying the product. There's no reason for us to go back to uh, 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 our, our lower uh, uh, prices from before the constraints on the supply chain, before the constraints on supply. Um, we just want to get as big a profit as we possibly can. Well, you know, uh, p- consumers deserve to know. And that's actually a very good point as well, because when I go shopping, I do look at the price per ounce. And that I think a lot of folks who go and shop, you want to get the best price per ounce. Have you heard why they have thought that this is a a good idea other than pure greed, why they're shrinking, again, the amount that they say for a family size or a large size of, as you say, a, a bag of chips or a box of cereal. What What is the, uh, I guess, the defense in all this? Because I have a hard time finding it. Yeah, I don't think there really is one except for the fact that they don't think we'll notice. Mm-hmm. And so we need, we need a watchdog uh, uh, out there uh, uh, on behalf of consumers. You know, uh, Wheaties went from a family box of 16 ounces to 14 ounces. Um, With some of the dish dish detergents, they actually haven't shrunk the size of the bottle. They just put less liquid in it. Um, The the paper products we talked about, uh, smaller sheets, fewer sheets, uh, but they don't think we'll notice. And uh, and and the price, of course, doesn't uh, doesn't change. It's still the same, even though you're purchasing less products. I think it's all about the fact that uh, we're usually sensitive to, to prices. We'll notice a price change, but we may not notice that you're just getting less for what it is uh, uh, that you're uh, picking up at the grocery store. And finally, uh, when you look at currently the the list of uh, sponsors, co-sponsors, uh, Democrats and independents right now, when you talk to uh, folks across the aisle, why wouldn't they be behind this? Because again, it's as simple as basically being fair to the consumer. What is the, I mean, obviously because you're in a very tight Senate in terms of House of Representatives the same way in terms of getting uh, legislation through. What is missing maybe from this piece of legislation that would bring maybe a little more bipartisanship or what is the reason why Republicans haven't uh, tied onto this uh, piece of legislation as well? Yeah, so uh, two things. Uh, first, we, we just uh, introduced the legislation. Um, mm. So, uh, you know, the next step, of course, is to uh, share uh, information with our colleagues and see if others will join in. Um, so that's number one. And number two, um, you know, there's uh, big corporations have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, power and influence and clout on Capitol Hill. And some of my colleagues are afraid to stand up, afraid to side with the consumers. Um, I'm, I'm, with the, I'm with the people who go into the grocery store and see that uh, sticker shock. And, uh, you know, again, we need a watchdog uh, out there on behalf of consumers. Senator Tammy Baldwin again yesterday introducing the Shrinkflation Prevention Act. Uh, again, really appreciate you coming on, explaining it. And uh, again, I know it's a very busy time. It's an election year, but still putting out a good piece of the legislation. Very, very uh, good to see. Hopefully, when you get to central Wisconsin, here to the Wassa area, you can stop on by. We'd love to have you and talk to you again. But thank you again uh, for spending a few minutes with us. Thank you.